Here's something I picked up at the swap meet this morning. This is the most basic radio that I've ever seen. I think it was five or ten dollars. I don't know. I got a couple radios. Anyway, it's made by Warwick and it's from the around 1940, maybe a little bit earlier than that. And this is one of those sets that uses the one volt tubes. So it's got a bunch of Delco tubes in it and it was serviced at some point by radio doctors. It's a five tube radio, or it was a five tube radio and someone who worked on it in the past Obviously they did the filter and that thing there that looks like a fuse, that's actually a, a like a medium voltage selenium rectifier and on the back of it they've got the added dropping resistor which I think you can kind of see it there, it's pretty burned up, it's 120 ohms or something like that and believe it or not this thing works but we had it running and it just died and it wouldn't come back on and then I got it home and we plugged it in and it worked again so we'll give a demonstration and we'll hope it, it dies and one thing that's interesting inside this thing was the um, operating instructions and schematic right there is a printout of the uh, the writers manual off nostalgia air and here's the schematic, the factory schematic, and you can see that the Nostalgia Air is, is simply a photocopy of the original schematic. The resolution of this is so horrible compared to this. And what's interesting is this actually has a price list down here for parts. Power switch, 63 cents. I have transformer, $1.25. And it's got the warranty and how to put the batteries in it. This is a series string set with uh, one volt tubes, so they heat up very rapidly when you power it up. Oh, it was just yeah. working, you just heard it. It was working a moment ago and now it's completely dead. So we'll try to find out why. Okay, we reduced the voltage on it a little bit. No, no, get off of that. That'll... To your smartphone. And three states and Julie fights with every day. And you could use computers. I mean, it, I mean, why not? I mean, I, I think they depending on how the antenna is oriented, it affects how well it gets the stations. Very strong signal there. One we call you. Get it, get on the station. That's and everything just there. Just away. there, just died. Yeah, completely dead. It's probably a capacitor that's shorting out. Hopefully, hopefully, it's a capacitor that's shorting out. Very, very basic radio. All right, we're just going to do an alignment on this. I got the thing on 455 and I just have this clip to the insulated wire. It's just laying here. Uh, that's just loosely coupled, right? Oh, here we go. I 
unable to turn that one. See how narrow those are? Okay, let's, let's play that game where we try and fish the parts out without causing the buzzer to come on. Yeah, someone worked on this. It's right on. Here's the replacement they did to the tube. The tube is in that this tube is independent, the filament is independent of these other it's tubes. No, it's normally a 35Z4. Right. But it's independent because these these one volt tubes, the filament is also the cathode. So they're not just fed a voltage, they're actually part of the biasing and control circuit for the uh, radio. So together every 10 minutes, it's brought to you by Road for you. Well, considering the weather, it's a surprise we only have one sig alert working right now, and it's in Pasadena, 210 eastbound, just before Lincoln. It's a multi-vehicle wreck. One of the vehicles a big rig, and the two right-hand lanes are blocked. Eastbound 210, first you have slowing from Angeles Crest Highway to the 134. Up ahead, East 210 slows again from San Gabriel Boulevard down to Irwindale Avenue. Westbound side of the 210, you're tapping brakes from the 57 all the way On to North Long Beach, 710 southbound, just before the 91. This is where Works pretty well for all that crap being in there, huh? Notice these paper capacitors have a plus on them. See that? See there's a plus right there. There's a plus right there. Usually, sometimes they say outside. Okay, that outside one's... Outside foil here. That one says outside foil. This one says outside foil. Interesting. Dog bone resistors to the max. The oscillator coil. Doesn't that look like electrolyte to you? Where? Like that yellow stuff, like maybe a... I mean, it doesn't look like anything's been replaced, but that's the kind of thing. That Why would a paper capacitor have electrolyte in it? It looks right. like something leaked out right here. Yeah, something maybe. Uh, so that would be. What would it be? That would be right in this area right here. That one just looks burnt. You know what we need to do? We should do some voltage checks on the. Uh, to make sure that the one between the the audio output's not leaking and okay. dumping, biasing that tube too hard. Okay, this is looking at the... Well, would it be the filament of the... Uh, no, it's the grid of the 1A5 audio output tube. And um, we have it biased. Well, it's creeping up. But anyway, I need to add that this is Shango 066, and you should be watching this video on the Shango 066 YouTube channel. I always have to put that in there because the clone bots are in effect these days. With Chris, by the way. So we are at creeping up here. I'm going to pull the tube out. Ooh, baby. So we definitely have a leaky capacitor here. Um, if you want to show what I'm measuring, it would be right. So we got a four, we got a .01 right there. We got a 470K on both sides of it. On these old schematics, they label M. M is actually K for K ohms, and then for megs, it'll actually say like right there, it'll say 10 megs. 
So don't get confused by this 470K that's or 470M that's actually 470K. And we could take a look at that resistor. Let me flip this down. I believe that's it right here. So it's labeled purple yellow. Okay, our 470K resistor is at uh, 650K and still climbing as the capacitor is discharged, so it's pretty well out of tolerance. Okay, we got a 10 meg here, brown, black, blue. So 1 meg would be brown, black, green. 10 meg would be brown, black, blue. And we got 28 megs for the for the uh, entertainment value flip the leads around let's just see if maybe we're picking up some voltage off of somewhere and you can see we do have some type of capacitor in there somewhere that's 26 megs Okay, this is a 2.2 meg red, red, green. Of course, you can't see the two reds, but we're measuring four megs. Yes. Boy, these are all dead on. How about um, these haven't aged at all, have they? They're only what uh, 40. I don't know. 75 years old. Yeah, only 75 years old. They haven't drifted a bit. Let's do this one right here. Red, black, green. Two, oh, two megs. It's probably low because we're measuring the leaky capacitor, not the resistor. I bet the resistor, I bet the capacitor measures less than two megs. This is pretty much a wholesale component replace, but I mean, I'd say it's not worth it. Stick it up on the shelf. Well, it works. Yeah, it works. I mean, that's a testament itself. to the tolerance, you know. Let's do this one right here, this right there. It looks like red, green, red. Yeah, that one. Is this another, should be another 2.2 .2 mag? I believe so, another red, red, green. And then we got this burnt, crispified one right here. We're trying to figure out what that is. And has that been just jumped with something new? I don't know, let me analyze that. All right, so we're continuing to go through these um, just for fun. This is just fun. We're not. We don't intend on building a new radio here, which is pretty much what it would take. Um, this should be a 3300. Orange, 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 uh, red would be 3300. And the schematic shows... The schematic shows two 1200s and one 3300 for power resistors. We can... I know the, the we're underneath my 400 watt halide bulb in the workshop, so you get that you get that uh, barber polling thing there from the camera being overloaded because it's so bright. But you can see there we got two 3300s and two 1200s, and so this 3300 is measuring 4.1k. 4.1. So that's not too bad. And then I don't know what we got going on here. This burn up and they bypassed it with this. And then this burn up and they bypassed it with this 1K. So you said, what did this one measure? One meg. One meg. Mm -hmm. 
one mag. And what did this one measure? They're paralleled. So. so how is this even working like that then? And what did this one measure? Let's find out. This was paralleled with this 1K right here? This thing is a mess. Okay, so we're dead on 1K here, but here... Alright, so we got 20 ohms here, which I don't even know what that is. So we got... How many filters are in this can? Two, and then we've got our third filter here. How about this resistor over here, this red, yellow, red... This is just entertaining how bad this is. And that's connected to what the... Oh, 325K? 300K? Well, it's either supposed to be a 220 or a 47. Probably a 220. A 220 that's measuring 320. Isn't it impressive that this works? Mm -hmm. So what I'm thinking about doing is just snipping, snipping the lead to this capacitor and just, this is the ultra ghetto repair, just tacking a disc capacitor in there. Just ultra ghetto. Friday through the weekend. Okay, I'm going to snip this lead going into this capacitor, which goes to the grid of the audio output. You want to hold them, hold that there, and Can we see it there. There we go, right there. Retired or retiring soon? Don't miss the special free Money Matters Retirement Seminar. Seven Did it drop? There you go. Leaky capacitor. You can do for you to take advantage of gains when possible while helping protect your retirement from a. Okay, let's just stick a disc in there. You see here our ultra unapproved uh, crappy repair. I didn't even I didn't even take the old capacitor out. I just cut the lead and just put another capacitor in series with it. So um, I should really say that don't do this at home this is not the right way to do this this is the wrong way to do this and I'm sure there are people that are just absolutely twerko squirculating in their chair right now knowing that something like this ex exists in the country that they dwell in so let's look at the voltage over here we got zero volts which is what we want to scour blogs and social media, to, and it's uh, risky when things are. get political. Oh, okay. Brands take stances all the time, from LGBT rights to Obamacare to environmental policies. Like, you know, everyone knows Starbucks is pro-LGBT and Hobby Lobby is pro-life and so on. Kim Basine has reported for Bloomberg News on the controversy that's brewed since the New Balance sneaker company spoke in support of Donald Trump in reference to trade policy. They did the right thing right off the bat. They came out and tried to explain their position. Well, isn't New Balance made in America? Of course they're going to... whatever. Sounds better, don't you think? Volatile political period. Yeah. And to reanalyze the demographics of their customers before taking any stance. We check your money at 20 and 50 after each hour. I'm Bloomberg's Ann Mostu for KNX... Okay, so what we got here is we got a radio where pretty much every single part has drifted way more than a hundred percent all the capacitors are leaky we got the wrong value re replacement resistors in there we got paralleled replacement resistors in here every resistor in this thing is bad and leaky and well the capacitors have turned into resistors but the um, resistors are all way out of whack and the thing works fairly well the reason why I wanted to get this in here is to take the DC bias off of the output tube because that will uh, EOL the output tube in short order having it a big DC bias. The other thing we notice is this is supposed to have 90 volts 
uh, B plus and it's up over 120 about so that's due to having the solid state rectifier and the wrong dropping resistor in there okay I realized I had the thing plugged into the ISO tap here because we have it in the isolated section and when we turn it down to about normal line voltage, the oscillator just completely stops. So the oscillator tube stops and then we measured the filament voltage on it and it's right now it's 2.1 and it should be a volt and a half. So again the resistors are all whacked here but usually this is a, you know the symptom of weak tubes. So I'll, uh, we'll check that tube, that converter tube, 1A7. Okay, no surprise here, the tube is dead. On 1.5 volts, um, measures nothing. If I come over here and go up to 2 volts, starts to measure something. If I go up to 2.25 volts, still very limited. 1A7 the minimum is 9 so this thing is dead. This is the 1A5 audio output tube minimum is 20. Looks good. This is the 1N5 IF amplifier uh, measuring it it's the minimum is 19 Measuring it um, on 1.5 volts, you can see I'm getting about a 1. If I go up to 2 volts on the filament, I get a 20. So this radio is very, very spent. This is the 1H5, which is the detector and the audio driver. And the minimum on this is 7. And measuring like 0.5 if I go up to 2 volts still dead okay so let's do the diode let's see 1H5 HS0 5000 zero, zero. so 0 0 1 HS 5000 um, 0 0 A2 and the minimum is 40 so we're going to bring this to A, and we're going to press 2 over here, which is diode, and the minimum is 40. Uh, they're probably, that's, that's up to 2 volts. They're probably all, these tubes are all baked out from having the wrong resistor in the power supply and running the tubes too hot uh, when they got rid of the high voltage the, the rectifier the tube rectifier they didn't put a big enough resistor in there uh, I don't think they probably actually measured the voltage and calculate you know did a real test they just threw some fixed value in there like 120 and thought well that might be good well yeah but probably ran the tubes a little bit too hot and caused them to expire. <laughs> These tubes don't have a cathode like a tube with a filament in it. They just have a coated piece of wire that glows and they're very delicate these one volt tubes. So, Okay let's do our channel sweep with the voltage cranked way, way up. This is kind of a neat radio because it's a Warwick you know and I know Warwick made stuff for I don't know, was it Sears or something? Um, so here we go. Do you feel bad? Well, the Southern California Honda dealers want to help. We're going to send your dad to El Salvador. Oh my God, I can't believe it. He's going to be so happy. KFI AM 640 is the fork report. Everything food. 
Darn. Well, look. I'll be safe to nurse. And I said, well, this was this. This was a so priestly hierarchy of the church. Oh. Um, the big one. <laughs> Seven in double overtime. Number five, Wisconsin. Minnesota, 31 to 17. Number eight, Penn State. Ran over Michigan State, 45 to 12. And con contributed. Once the group had. And things like you said. In other. Uh, so it's kind of. A, but at the same time, it's just like. In the wind. And just. Works pretty good for how bad it is, doesn't it? Every tube, almost every tube is dead. Every resistor is more than 100% off. Every capacitor is leaky. Uh, and it's got a bunch of bodge work on it. So, that right there is a testament to the flexibility and tolerance of tube equipment. the voltage cranked way up on these you really can't see them um, you can see the filament in there it's just a wire but you really can't see them you really can't see them with their at the right voltage but I'm going to show you what they look like through night vision um, it's pretty interesting it's so what the radio looks like through night vision That's the converter tube right there. Continuing on with this spent puppy, I look through my spreadsheets and I see that I actually have these tubes. I just need to dig them out. But before I install new tubes in this, I want to get the filament voltage above anything else down to where it should be because these, these, uh, the burn off will be severe with these tubes. The life will be extremely shortened down by high filament voltage. So what I've done is I've kind of figured this out. Now these one volt tubes need a an extremely clean filtered DC. These filaments are not AC. So there's actually a multi-stage filter here with this. So as you can see, it comes out of our tube here through a 27 ohm then to a capacitor, 1200 ohm capacitor, 1200 ohm capacitor. Then it comes up here to the filaments, which comes up here to the, the first filament, which then works its way. And like I said earlier, these filaments are the cathodes. So they're actually, if you look here, the filament is actually tied to other parts of the circuit. So again, these radios, if these filter capacitors are not good, these radios won't even work. They need a very pure DC on these filaments. Um, the cathodes are not isolated in a tube. The filament is the cathode. Okay, we get that. 
So what I'm doing is I'm looking at this and we have two resistors here in parallel, this one and the sand one. We have two resistors here in parallel, this one and the sand one. So our starting voltage out of the rectifier is 146. Okay, then we come over here to the first... The first filter would be in the can. This is the second filter. So we drop to 81 and then we come over here to come over here to the third filter which is also pulled over to the can and we're down to 8.62 volts and then following this I noticed we got some mystery resistor here that's not in the schematic which is this so I jump across to that so I jump across to that and I'm down to 8 volts and uh, it's interesting I got another filter in here so I've got four stages of filtration on these tubes for the DC filament and I don't know if this is that solder does not look factory to me so I'm gonna say someone put this in here it's okay I'm not worried about it what I'm worried about is the fact that I have 8 volts on four 1.5 volt tubes where I should have 6 volts meaning 1.5 volts per tube so, and right currently I'm plugged straight into the line, so I'm not running through any kind of transform, buck boost transformer, so I'm right where I should be. So what I need to do now is I need to increase one of these resistors um, and try and get this down. Now this is such a mess of paralleled resistors that I'm not sure what's going on here. I don't know if I should tear this all apart or if I should just tweak it a little bit and try and get it to go. Try and get the voltage down a little bit. I could probably break... Probably the easiest one to do would be to break this connection over here and just put another resistor in there. The other trick I've done on these is I put a Zener diode from this point me being the first uh, the main filament voltage to ground so if we have like if we're supposed to have six volts I'll put an eight volt Zener diode in there from that point to ground so if something was to go wrong it wouldn't blow the, f the tube filaments out the Zener diode would catch the uh, the over voltage so we can look at that but again this thing is a trash can I don't know how far I really want to go with making this toilet flush again okay I actually have a couple ways to do this I can use the decade box or I can use this which is a big power pot 300 ohm I forget who makes these but ohm might um, so, and then the other thing I was thinking, since the B plus is kind of high, what I might do is I might try and increase, instead of this, I might try and increase the resistor on the back of the diode there and see when I get the filament voltage right, do I also get the B plus right. So let me go ahead and adjust this. I will watch the meter. Well, that doesn't look right. Looks like that has an open in it. Okay, let me go to the other side. Okay, well, I, I ended up with this one, which seems to work, so let's dial it in here. This one's a little bit too high a resistance. So let's say about right there. Okay. Now according to this, we want about 500 ohms here. That sure does seem high to me, but what do I know? Then the other thing we could do is we could try 
increasing this resistor over here on the, the fuse. Okay, I've added it in, I've just pulled one side of the diode out and I've added it in there. And I had to go to a, this is a 150. Um, and my B plus is 111, the schematic says 96. And my filament voltage is 5.98. So I think I like this better going with a bigger resistor on back of the fuse. I could just probably put the 35Z5 back in there, but I think the resistor for its filament is gone. I think it's been removed. This radio has had a lot of work done on it, and that's an understatement. So I think what I'm going to do, if this is 150 ohms, uh, we're probably at about 120 right there, just by the looks of it. Um, so I think that's the way to go. Because that drops the B plus down a little bit. The B plus being 10 volts high is not that big of a deal. Not Nothing like the filaments being, you know, high. Here's something that's interesting. So I take and I measure uh, the resistance of this and this combined. And I'm at 129 ohms. Which is what this should be. And you look at that, it's uh, brown, red, black, which is 12 ohms. So somebody screwed up here. It should be a brown, red, brown, and probably 5 watts or bigger. So we'll get a 120 in there, around 120, 130, and... Um, yeah, interesting. Interesting stuff. A lot of a real botch job. Real botch job. This is this is a video demonstration on how you do not do repairs or restoration. So use this as a learning tool for sloppy sloppy crap. All right, well I did something pretty stupid yesterday. I actually Look through my charts again, my spreadsheets, and I found that I had these two tubes. And after changing this resistor to a 150 ohm and basically getting the voltage, the filament voltage down to where it's supposed to be, I popped the new tubes or the good use tubes in there and it was working. But the volume was a little weak and I still know it's got dead capacitors and all the resistors are off. But it actually sounded better with the higher voltage in the other tubes. So what I wanted to do was just to change the audio output just to sub it out. So I didn't turn the radio off, which usually on a 6 volt system I do this all the time. But I, I just spaced it and of course what happened is I pulled this tube out and when I pulled it out the capacitors charged all the way up to full voltage uh, and when I put the tube in of course you had these capacitors with this high potential and it just blew the filament and this one apart this tube was weak I gotta find one uh, I see on eBay there is an adapter that goes from a 1S Five to whatever 1H5 or whatever. I might try and make one of those just for fun. I'm going to have to figure it out because the 1S5 has got an extra grid or something like that. I forget. But what I've, I mentioned this in the beginning of the video and I've done this before on these, especially the Zeniths, is put a Zener diode and I hate to put modern parts in these old sets, but these one volt tubes are so delicate. Uh, so this is like a 9 volt Zener diode. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put this, well I'll show you. So looking at the filament voltage without the load on it across this capacitor, you can see it's charged up to 105 volts. Well, that's what happened. I pulled the tube out, the capacitor charged up to 105 volts, which is supposed to be at 6 volts. Then I stuck the tube in and of course pop. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to essentially parallel this Zener diode with this capacitor. That way if the, something like that ever happens, it will shunt 
anything above 9 volts off and it'll kind of regulate it at 9 volts. Okay, the Zener diode is installed. Now these, the, um, you kind of put these in reverse of a regular diode, so you want to put the band towards the positive side. If you put it in the other way, it'll just be like a regular diode. It'll be a half a volt. So it's in there. We're powered up. We're limiting at 9.3 volts now versus 100. So now if I was to pull a tube out and plug it in, it, it wouldn't, you know, it wouldn't do what it did. Um, wouldn't blow my tubes up. So now I got to find a, a new detector tube. Okay, this is a 1LH4. This is a Loctal. And it has the locking base there. I think these were military style. I don't know. I don't like them. And this is the 1H5 that I blew up. Now these are exactly the same tubes. Exactly electrically. They're the same tubes. They're just in a different envelope. And here is a Loctal socket. And you can see there's only five pins on the bottom of this. So there's only four pins used on the bottom of this and then the nipple. So the first thing I have to do is tear this apart. Um, we'll use this bottom part as our base to make an adapter. Crap, I'm still only, I'm only doing this video on 720 by 480 and I thought thought this was going to be kind of a crappy video, but here we go. So we got five pins here but you can see one of them connects to the uh, the shield that metal thing that says General Electric on it so we'll just ignore that um, that will probably connect to the nipple on the bottom anyway here's what we did um, you just have to figure this out on your own look up the tubes on Look up the tubes, uh, the pinouts, and then you have to figure it out. So that's what I've done right there. On the, on the left is the 1H5. On the right is the 1LH4. Same tube, electrically different package. So here's the, the 1LH, 1H5 that I fried. Uh, I pulled the base off of it. I pulled the cap off of it. Here's my adapter. You can see I have the, the grid cap here. Um, and I guess I could pop this in the tube tester and test it as a 1H5 just to verify before I put it in the radio. It might not hurt because these tubes are so delicate. Okay, here's the adapter installed. Again, this is a 1LH4 substituting a 1H5. Uh, we got our new resistor in there, which should bring the is bringing the filament voltage down to what it should be. The antenna's hooked up, and here we go. Hey, we didn't play it there that he doesn't ever have to worry. Jeff Fisher doesn't ever have to worry about him at a game of dirty from uh, Christian Ramsey. I think it is a great idea to make it. I'm going to that uh, tonight. <laughs> And Flipper, is, I'm still mad at Flipper. I'm still really mad at Flipper. That's, Flipper that's messed up, man. Uh, tonight at 6.20, um, I'm making this as just a public service announcement, yes. okay? You're generous. Tonight at 6.20, I don't want Jeff Fisher to watch uh, us <laughs> with Kurt <laughs> Fenn. No, let's have his story. without Jordy. Yes, KX 1070 News Radio. LA Transit officials looking for help naming three new subway stations, part of a regional connector that's being built downtown. Some of the names currently being considered are Little Tokyo Arts District for the stop at 1st Street and Central, Historic Broadway for the stop at 2nd Street, and Bunker Hill Grand Avenue Arts for the one at 2nd Place and Hope Street. We're really looking at how the riders of the system will be able to identify what stops they need to get out to visit uh, points of interest. Rick Jagger with Metro says it's 
Okay, not bad for how far off all the components are in this. Uh, I'm pretty happy with it. Um, I might actually just use it. It's very entertaining to me. Oh, and I should say that uh, this is Shango 066, and you should be watching this on the Shango 066 YouTube channel. We have to constantly plug the branding because people like to... Uh, repost my videos. I don't know why that is. So if you see this on another channel besides my own um, as a re-upload, please let me know. I really appreciate that. Nine dollars and they are limited and shipped for free. I know nobody wants to see this under their Christmas tree, but I have done it myself for $99. It is a great gift, especially if you love that. I would love that, too. Love that. Especially for your kids who have moved out, started their own, whatever. $99. This, I think, is an unbelievable Christmas gift. It takes care of, like we've talked about this many times, it takes care of about 95% of... I spoke about this. He wanted that motion, that non-stop motion, so that the game never stopped. And that's kind of the vibe that... I wish it had a little bit more high-frequency response and less on the low end, but that could be due to... Um, all the resistors and capacitors being so off value. 